Welcome along to another video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this video we'll take a quick look at some SQL database basics. Okay, so I'm here now on my server and I'm in the file management system. You can see that I have two existing uh, or I have an existing SQL database here which is made up of two distinct files one of them being an MDF and one of them being an LDF. Both of these are required for the SQL database. So to detach this database from um, an instance of SQL, what we need to do firstly is to launch the SQL manager. So the way we do that is go start all programs, go into our uh, SQL folder, and in there you'll find the option for SQL Server Management Studio. Now we need to run that as an administrator, so what we'll need to do is right mouse click on that and select run as administrator. When that then launches, uh, we need to accept the UAC, so we'll just go yes. And that will bring up the uh, GUI interface that allows us to interact with that um, instance of SQL. So once the uh, console is launched, you'll see that we're prompted here to enter the name of the server, the SQL server we wish to connect to. In this case, we want to connect to server name slash SharePoint using the Windows authentication. So once I've entered that, I simply press the connect button. And then down here on the right, sorry, the left, you will see a list of databases, secure number of other folders. So if we expand the databases folder, you'll see that we see a list of our databases. One of those databases you'll notice is the database ShareWebDB. So this is the one we want to detach. So again, to detach it, I simply right mouse click on the name of the database, select Tasks, and then select Detach. This will now bring me up into a Detach Databases window. And as you can see, we can select the option here. We're going to detach ShareWeb DB. What I'm going to do here is to tick these two options. Firstly, if we expand the columns, we'll see that this will drop out all our connections and this will also update the statistics. So you notice in the messages area, you currently have one active connection. This means that some application is still accessing this database, whether actively or passively. But by checking these two options, it will force a disconnection um, of the database from all the applications. So again, you need to be aware and be sure that the application no longer needs the database before you do it attach. So when you write, make sure those are checked. We select OK. And you'll see down here in the bottom left, you'll see an executing and a uh, spinning icon indicating that the database is being detached. The time taken to detach will depend on the size of the database and also on the power of your hardware. So once the database is detached, we return to the Management Studio window and you'll see in our list of databases that the database is not listed at all anymore. So again, you'll notice that however the files still remain. Go here and if I refresh the view, you'll see that the databases still remain. So by detaching the databases, we haven't deleted the low-level files. We've just changed the database to no longer be managed through this instance of SQL. Now, if we want to attach a database, so we want to put this database back in, what we need to do again is to go into the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, uh, open the object viewer and if we right mouse click on the databases folder itself and select the option to attach we're then brought to uh, attach databases window we go up here and select add so now we need to locate the database we wish, wish to attach in our file system so here it is here it's in the data directory called sharewebdb select ok and you'll notice that it has information about the database to attach and in the bottom window it shows us the original file name and also the log. It's important to remember that a database is not made up of just a single file, it is made up of two files, an MDF and a log file. So when we're right, we again press the OK button, 
we'll see the executing uh, displayed in the bottom left along with the spinning icon and again the amount of time taken to attach this database to our system will depend on the size of the database as well as the speed of hardware. So once it's now attached we'll see that the name recurs in the databases folder and that database is now accessible and usable by other applications through SQL. This video has been brought to you by the SharePoint Operations Guide. For information on how to install, migrate and maintain Windows SharePoint, visit www.wssops.com. To provide any feedback or comments on this video, please send me an email at director at ciaops.com or follow along on my blog at supportweb.ciaops.net.au forward slash blog. Thank you very much for watching.